recommended me to uh, apply for the investment associate role. And last year in September of 2021, it just was the perfect fit. And uh, it's been an amazing journey working with the team ever since. This is another episode of the Form Your Own Pack podcast from Founders Pack. My guest today is Daryl Frader, and we know Daryl very well from the past because he was one of the original pitch entrepreneurs in our Winner Takes All pitch events. How are you doing, Daryl? Hey, Mike. It's been a minute, man. Glad to be here chatting with you. Me too. Well, we wanted to talk catch up with you because you've made a big transition in the last year. You've actually gone from being the founder of a startup to investing in startups. Uh, with visible hands. So I guess for first off, for people that don't know, who is Daryl Freider? Yeah. So as you said, uh, I used to be a founder, full-time founder, and I participated in a number of your events. So appreciate you curating those. Um, but over the past year, I've been full-time at Visible Hands VC as an investment associate. Uh, we're a pre-seed venture capital firm investing in diverse founders. We focus on investing in women and founders of color through our 14-week accelerator program. We invest up to 175K per team, investing in about 45, 45 teams a year. Uh, so it's been an amazing journey working with the team. We're a fairly new fund. So we've been around for a little under two years. Um, we have 90 investments um, as of this recent cohort, which we just started last week. Uh, so it's been an exciting journey investing in overlooked and underrepresented founders through our accelerator program. That's amazing. Uh, so what what was the big motivation behind moving, first of all, from being a founder to a VC? Yeah, so my journey towards venture capital has started in 2018. Um, and becoming a founder is actually a part of that journey. Um, I really always had a passion for entrepreneurship. And in 2018, I got exposed to venture capital and the great impact that it can have. And my ultimate goal in life is to play a major role in closing wealth gaps. And when I was introduced to venture capital, um, after reading a book called Why Should White Guys Have All the Fun by Reginald Lewis, it really opened my mind to the opportunities that were available in venture capital and how it can be used to democratize wealth and enable other people to build wealth and to have opportunities that weren't available to them otherwise. So since 2018, after reading that book, I just did everything I can to make myself really well-rounded in understanding investing company building, venture capital, and just really preparing myself on my initial goal was to actually launch my own firm. Um, and uh, on the pathway, you know, after going back to school to get my MBA, building a couple of early stage startups, working with a number of accelerator programs and fellowship programs, and just doing a lot of my own research online, um, the Visible Hands team reached out and some people recommended me to uh, apply for the investment associate role. And Last year in September of 2021, it just was the perfect fit. And uh, it's been an amazing journey working with the team ever since. I love it. Uh, what are some of the companies or founders that you're really excited about right now? Wow. So uh, like I said, we invest in about 45 founders a year. Uh, we have our cohort one from last year and our cohort two from this year. So we are at, at 90 portfolio founders that we've invested into all diverse, all women or founders of color, and they all are tremendous and amazing founders. Uh, so we're just super excited about the great talent that we've had from both cohorts. And we've seen a lot of success in, in both of those cohorts, um, from cohort one and even the, the new founders that we are just getting to know now really um, in cohort two. Um, so I could maybe you know highlight one from cohort one and one from cohort two. Sure. Uh, so from from cohort one, uh, we have a phenomenal team of four black women um, that have come together two um, PhDs from MIT and two MBAs from Wharton um, that came together to build a company called Parfait. And Parfait is a AI driven a wig creation company where they make custom wigs using artificial intelligence to perfectly design them to fit uh, the, the purchaser's uh, perfect fit. And uh, they have, you know, raised money from us and we were one of the first early investors. And after taking our investment, they've gone on to raise over $5 million 
um, from notable venture capitalists such as Serena Williams venture capital firm Serena Ventures uh, and Upfront Ventures who led their round last year for uh, $5 million and a bunch of other amazing investors and their technology is amazing. Their team is amazing and they're doing tremendous work um, with their company. So I'm super proud of the team at Parfait That's and cool. everything that they're doing. Um, and then, you know, in, in cohort two, we're still really getting to know um, this team, but there's, there's just so many uh, great founders that we just had our one week in-person orientation in Tulsa, Oklahoma, because uh, our program is completely virtual. Okay. Um, but in order to really create the bonds in the community that we see that really make tremendous impact in creating a strong cohort, we do a one week in-person orientation for Accelerator. Um, and I literally just came back yesterday from Tulsa, Oklahoma, where we hosted our one week in-person orientation. Um, so I got to meet and talk to so many amazing founders that we just made our investments into. Uh, so it's so hard to pick one that I'm excited oh, okay. about, but, but one that I... <laughs> built a strong relationship with um, over the time. Um, his name is George Holmes. He's the founder of Hire Henry. Um, and they are a ro robotics company that make robotic lawnmowers that are able to uh, cut lawn and be able to use robotics to do lawn care. And it's just amazing to see just how quickly George and his team are moving to using their technology to work with some really notable clients I know they have one client who is uh, an airport in Texas where they are cutting their lawns using their robots. And it's just amazing about, you know, where we're trending in regards to labor and getting this kind of work done efficiently and cost effectively. Um, so George and his team, super innovative in the robotics space. And I look forward to seeing, you know, what they accomplish from here um, with us, you know, only a couple of weeks into making our investments into them. Man. We're, we're seeing a lot of progress and growth already. And it's just exciting to see so much innovation happen from these diverse founders, women, founders of color that, you know, are, are, are traditionally overlooked by the venture capital ecosystem. And we're happy that organizations like Visible Hands exist to be able to provide the capital and the resources needed to support these founders with innovative ideas and talent. So, you know, are, are these, when you um, find your founders, obviously we understand your thesis, are you finding that, like, what is the motivation, not the motivation, but the inspiration for them to become entrepreneurs? Are they from families where there are entrepreneurs? Is it from other sources? Like what, what's driving them to become founders? Are they first time in their family or... Yeah, it's very diverse and, and different for every founder um, in their journey. Um, so I've seen many where, you know, their parents were entrepreneurs and entrepreneurship is all they knew. Um, that's similar to, to my journey. Uh, my father's an entrepreneur and oh, I've always had a love for mm -hmm. entrepreneurship. But others, they, you know, have just seen a problem in this world that they have a passion to solve for. And when these problems exist, they innovate and they come up with solutions that can drive tremendous impact in this world and that was what's motivate them to, to see change in the in the issues that they see in this world and creating technology solutions that solve for them that's awesome i mean one of one of our motivations behind founders pack is we encourage people to form your own pack but i'm always curious and always interested in trying to think how do we encourage more kids really to think that entrepreneurship is something like wait this is the way that you should be going to start something and you can solve any problem if you just start, you know, hacking through it. So I'm always very interested to understand because I find that there is a thread there where it's always the parent and that's kind of limiting. I like, I want to find more kids that we can get to and from whatever background, right? Like, like we don't care, like let's get, get kids inspired to, you know, have people that are in your cohort, people that have reached a certain, um, you know, level of status because of their entrepreneurship in their life. And let's use those as models and then teach these kids like rapidly prototype, go pitch your idea and go talk to real customers, right? Like any, anybody can do that. You can do that if you're 12 or 13. Yeah, I think it's tremendous of the access of information that's out there for uh, these young people that are right. interested in entrepreneurship. And um, it's just amazing that you're starting to see entrepreneurs at a very young age making a lot of money and doing some very yeah. innovative stuff. So I'm all for it. And I would love to talk to more uh, young entrepreneurs because it's just the beginning of their journey and they have a lot of time to continue to improve and make mistakes and, you know, continue to move forward with their innovative ideas. So 
the younger, the better. I wish I started um, working in, you know, technology and innovation and, and entrepreneurship even earlier. The first business that I started was when I was 19 in college. Um, it was a nonprofit mentoring program where we mentored students um, in the city of Trenton, New Jersey. Um, and it, it just, I learned a lot through my entrepreneur experience, but getting early and innovative as, as possible is, is super helpful because everything you learn, it compounds over time and you can use it in other avenues of your business and your life. Um, so I am the full advocate of get in as early as possible and learn about entrepreneurship and, and start tankering and, and tinkering and, and moving around with things because the learnings are amazing and you can make a lot of impact with them. Well, I, I know that our mutual friend, uh, who I think was a judge in your pitch event, uh, pitch event, Arabian Prince, has done a lot with schools where he goes and he talks to kids. And I'm always, uh, we've probably just got to get more organized, but I would love to go into these different neighborhoods. One we talked about is Garden Grove, where he's done a lot of work in that area. And I'm like, you know, what can I do with visible hands or Arabian prints to go talk to kids? Because the earlier we get to them, the better. And you, you see, that's when they have the best imaginations too, right? Like, I think of this is off the topic, but, you know, I'd, I'd love to go in and have a pipeline to you and to me, right? It's like, the earlier we get them, the earlier they think that's a possibility and they can make stuff and do stuff and try stuff. And that's, so anything that, if you guys are interested in that, please let me know. I know he's interested in that. We can maybe collaborate on some stuff. Yeah, let's do it. I have uh, a number of initiatives that are growing up at Visible Hands, um, and we can definitely talk about more opportunities to get involved with the youth. I know uh, we're working on a few projects ourselves that are cool. very, very exciting, and you'll hear about them very soon. Uh, so yeah, we can definitely talk offline about that. All right. I'm excited to hear about that. All right, Daryl, if you could offer other founders only one piece of advice, what would that advice be? My advice would be, and just pretty general, but, you know, do not be afraid to make mistakes. A lot of times we are seeking perfection to launch and perfection to get started, but just really having the open-mindedness to get out there, try things and use mistakes, use failures as a stepping stone to success. And you will get very far in life and move much more quickly than if you're shooting for perfection. Um, so don't be afraid to make mistakes and just get out there, learn and, and, and be hungry to learn more. I love it. That is great advice. What has the role of partnerships or community been in your success? Oh, we got some crazy dogs going on here. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, for me, community has been super impactful uh, for me, building relationships and having a community that I can learn from and gain support from uh, has really allowed me to be where I'm at today. Um, like I said, I started my journey into VC since 2018, and I was able to be in participate with many communities as a founder, as a, a person looking to break into VC. And these communities and the people and the friendships that I made um, really allowed me to get opportunities that pushed me forward and allowed me to be where I'm at today. So community really is a strong opportunity that helps you build opportunity and allows you to make connections that can be very beneficial to your life. And then you can also um, add value to theirs as well. I love it. All right. What's the best way for people to get in touch with you? Best way to get in touch with me is Twitter. Um, I love to interact and connect with people on Twitter. You can find me there I'm at Daryl Freighter, just my name. And um, additionally from Twitter, LinkedIn or email, you can find me anywhere, Daryl Freighter. Um, and my email uh, for Visible Hands is at Daryl at VisibleHands.vc. Um, and the best way to stay in touch with Visible Hands and our investment opportunities is to sign up for our newsletter, where we always put great content, resources, and investment opportunities from our fund and other organizations as well. So you can go to our newsletter at visiblehands.vc and stay in touch with all the opportunities we have for founders, investors, um, and anyone within the startup ecosystem. Amazing. Daryl, I want to acknowledge you for the big change you've made in your life and all the progress you're making. Anything I can do to help you, just please let me know. Um, I also want to uh, send you an invite to Intros by Founders Pack that we talked about before. This is our new weekly um, automated matchmaking platform. And it basically, you know, any Founders Pack member that's a founder or an investor is in there. So we'd like to make sure that you're included in that. And if you have anyone else exciting that you want to invite, that'd be great. We can pass on the invitation as well. All right. The, 
Yeah, and we would love to have you in that. Um, all right, so the final thing is when we have interesting people on the podcast, we'd like you to nominate other interesting people. As you know, we either talk to venture capitalists, investors, or founders of scalable ventures. Who would you, Daryl, like to nominate as a future guest? Yeah, so top of mind right now, since I just came back from Tulsa with uh, some of the great founders we met in cohort two, um, this one founder who has been an amazing person to for me to get to know. Um, he's building Jump Button Studios. His name is Nicodemus Medeo. Um, I would like to invite Nicodemus to share his story and um, the journey that he's on with building Jump Button Studio, which is a, a game studio that is solving uh, problems within diversity in the gaming industry. And uh, him and his team are, are doing tremendous work. Um, and I love his story. So um, connecting with Nicodemus would be amazing to hear his story. Awesome. Nicodemus, you have the coolest name, I think, of anybody that's been nominated so far. So I'm excited. Uh, Daryl, thank you so much for your time. And thank you for that nomination. We accept it. And we look forward to talking to you soon. Awesome, Mike. Thanks for your time, man.